This video is a comparison of two super cheap, like entry level welders. This is a MIG welder, which uses a shielding gas. And then this guy is a flux core welder, which has the uh, flux built into the wire. Um, I bought this guy on Amazon a couple years ago and have used it for quite a few projects. This flux core welder was sent to me for free a few weeks back. I know a lot of big YouTubers get like Lincoln Electric and Fronius welders sent to them. Uh, this is like bargain basement, 100 buck welder so what I'm gonna do is I've got a job box here in my shop that I need to weld some legs on so I'm gonna weld one leg using the MIG welder this guy that I've been using for quite a while and I'm gonna weld the other one using the flux core welder that I've just been using for a couple weeks and while I do that I'm gonna give you a breakdown like a full comparison of everything I think you should think about if you're looking at a MIG welder and a flux core welder and you don't know which one to buy all right, so the first thing I would consider is portability. If you need a really portable welder, the FlexCore welder is just gonna do it for you. This MIG welder on the left, it's, it's portable, but it's gonna have a gas tank associated with it. And that gas tank, even a smaller one, it just makes it less portable. All right, now let's get into the cost of these two welders. This is a big concern for people, so I'm just gonna break it down here. I've got the price of my full MIG setup on the left and the price of my flux core setup on the right. So you can see I dropped uh, 470 bucks on my Lotus MIG welder on the left. That was uh, you know, pretty much the cheapest one I could get on Amazon that didn't have like all one star reviews. 470 bucks for the welder. I dropped 200 bucks on a big gas tank. I didn't want to get a small tank. I had to refill all the time. 200 bucks for the tank. Uh, I also had to get a um, regulator for the top of the tank and that's built into that price. Every time I refill that gas on the MIG welder, 50 bucks to fill the tank. 20 bucks, however, and that's a cheaper price, 20 bucks for big spools of MIG wire. You will save money on wire with a MIG wire, uh, welder. And then 100 bucks for miscellaneous expenses I threw in there. That's like clamps and magnets and gloves and helmet and stuff like that. So my MIG setup at a conservative estimate is 820 bucks. You could easily spend a thousand bucks to get into MIG welding. You could spend more if you got a nicer welder. All right, on the flux core side, you're gonna save money right out of the chute. 120 bucks for this Sunku really basic flux core welder. You could probably double that and get a nicer welder. However, the wire is more expensive for flux core. 20 bucks for a small spool of flux core wire. 100 bucks miscellaneous. I kept that the same between the two, which gets us to 240 bucks for the intro flux core setup. Now let me just mention about this wire thing. Uh, the flux core wire is more expensive. So if you got a hundred flux core wire spools, that's gonna run you 2000 bucks. So over time, let's say you use a hundred spools, the same amount of wire on your MIG welder is only gonna run you 700 bucks, maybe 500 bucks if you buy your wire at Harbor Freight. So you're gonna save on wire on the MIG side, you're gonna spend more on wire on the flux core side. All right, now in terms of safety, I don't think either welder is really more dangerous. You can burn yourself with both of them. You don't want to be the ground with either of them. Both welders require reasonable care. And then here you can just see me uh, spooling the wire on the flux core welder. The MIG's pretty much the same, but it takes a bigger spool. And on both machines, I run the wire through an earplug. That just keeps dust and dirt out of the line. All right, now here's the big job box that I'm gonna be working on in this project. And you can see it's got these wooden legs that I'm replacing with metal ones. I'll do the leg on the left with the MIG and the one on the right with the flux core. Now, as I, as I get going, I wanna talk about convenience with these two welders because there are some hidden inconveniences in there. Um, the nice thing about the flux core, the one on the right, is that uh, you clean up your metal, get it down and clean, and you plug in your welder and you're good to go and start welding. So that's nice and convenient. The inconvenience with the MIG welder on the left is that you've got the gas bottle. Uh, you got to make sure you have gas. If you're out of gas, it's a pain in the neck. Other than that, it's pretty easy. It's just a little bit hard to move around. You've got to keep it on a welding cart. If you're welding up high or in an awkward spot out in the field or something, it might be more inconvenient. The hidden inconvenience with the flux core, the one on the right, you're going to see this, is that there's a lot of spatter and mess and that takes time to clean up. All right, so I got started with the MIG welder over on the left and I uh, got the gas going, got my levels set up, cut my wire and started welding up the leg. Uh, you can see here that I'm putting a foot on the leg and the first thing I did is have some trouble with it. I was hoping it would just work perfectly and my settings I think were right. I think the gas wasn't coming out perfectly and the reason I mentioned that is just that even though I've been welding with MIG for 
over a year, maybe two years. I still every now and then have some hiccups. Uh, after putting that foot on, it did uh, get dialed in pretty well. So this is all just to say that there's a learning curve with these two machines. I think on the MIG side, the hard part is just keeping track of everything. You gotta keep, keep track of your wire speed, your gas, your heat, etc and then also the um, you know welds themselves and the technique for putting them down as for the flux core machine which i'm going to start using here in a second the main challenge has to do with that puddle you just can't really see the puddle through all the spatter and smoke and whatnot and not being able to see exactly what you're doing means your welds don't look exactly the way you want them to look always sometimes they actually turn out pretty good but i think the learning curve with the flux core machine is challenging just in that there's some kind of mystery as to what's happening when you're actually welding all right now i'm not going to say a whole lot about accessories uh, but with both welders you're going to need some extras to go along with them in terms of a mask and gloves and magnets and whatnot uh, that i mentioned earlier like i said i spent maybe a hundred bucks on accessories you could go way over the top if you end up buying like a dedicated welding table or something like that i also just want to mention that this flex core machine puts off some smoke and you do want to get your head out of the smoke um, it's not good to breathe that stuff and in some of this footage you can see that I was I think one of the parts of that learning curve with the flux core is getting your head out of the way and kind of welding at arm's length instead of up close to your face Next I wanted to mention the power demands of both welders now they're both 110 which is just your standard alternating current here in North America but uh, this flux core machine actually needs a 30 amp breaker I was running it on a 20 amp breaker and it just kept blowing it um, I switched over to a 30 amp breaker and it's working just fine. So that's just one difference. Now, I think if you got a different flux core machine, it probably wouldn't be a problem. I've seen a few other reviews of this dude and this flux core machine here on the right. I've seen a few other reviews and they also had trouble with the amperage. Just, it just pulling too high amp. So a 30 amp breaker to run the flux core machine that I'm using here and a 20 amp to run my MIG, wel MIG welder. I just thought it was worth mentioning. All right, so that gets us into talking about the quality of these two welding machines. You know, you don't want to weld something up and have it suck or fall apart or just look totally hideous. I think it's a, a mixed bag. It's not totally clear which one's better. You can see right here I'm welding up some holes on the right using the flux core machine. And I just struggled with that. I set the, the heat down as low as I could. I had some low wire speed. I didn't think I was going to burn through and I just kept burning through. And now this is some older steel. It's kind of a little bit rusty, so it is thin in spots, but it gave me a little bit of a headache. Um, as you saw earlier, I also had a bit of a headache with the MIG machine welding something really simple. Now, on either machine, you can always clean it up with the grinder. People will tell you that, you know, if you're using a grinder to clean up your welds, you're not a good welder, and that's probably true, but man, sometimes my welds are chunky and nasty, and a grinder just basically cleans them up. Other times, uh, you know, I just find if I actually remove a weld with the grinder, clean it up, and start over, I do a better job. Anyway, what do I think about the quality? Let me say a few more things. Um, the MIG lays down a pretty weld. You know, you can see the puddle when you're welding. And when you can see the puddle, you can really manipulate it and, and keep it kind of exactly where you want it to be. And in the end, you can kind of get that weld to, you know, penetrate, be just the right shape and size and all that. So it's a cool process. I really do like the MIG. I know TIG welds are even more meticulous. Now, the flux core, the quality of the weld ends up being pretty good but you're just welding in this big kind of shit storm of sparks and, and smoke and everything. So sometimes the weld quality is really awesome in terms of like the aesthetics of it. And other times it looks kind of junky and I have not figured out exactly what I'm doing wrong when it looks kind of junky. Now, that's kind of an aesthetic thing. The quality should also be judged based on like how strong it is or how it holds up. And I think both welders hold up. They're both good. If you prep your metals good, if you get it really cleaned up, both of these welder, welders can be used to effectively weld something up. And I think you'll see in what I did here by putting on this leg uh, with the flux core and with the MIG on both sides, you know, sure, you can tell that the left side is done with the MIG and you can tell the right side is done with the flux core. 
But I think that the quality's there on both of them. Like, I don't think it's gonna fall off. You know, I'm not building a bridge here. This isn't the kind of structure where someone's life depends on it. It's a pretty simple job, and there's a high degree of tolerance for uh, mistakes. With all that said, which one do I think has more quality? I gotta say the MIG. The MIG is just a little bit nicer. You can regulate the heat more effectively, uh, etc. So I like the MIG a little bit more. One of the reasons for that though, I gotta say this, one of the reasons for that is that the flux core machine that I have is pretty janky and you can't really control the heat very well. It's got a one, two switch for the wire speed and a one, one, two high, low speed for the temperature. And that's just not enough to really dial in a very, very specific temperature. So I think a different flux core machine would probably give you better results. It's just not gonna cost a hundred bucks on Amazon. And then here's a look at the pretty much finished uh, MIG side and pretty much finished flux core side. And like I said before, they have different visual characteristics, but I think they're both pretty solid. On the flux core side, you can definitely see that spatter. It looks almost like the face of the moon, you know, like cratered out uh, just from all the uh, stuff kind of blowing and sparking around. All right, so I'm flipping the box over and it looks pretty good. There's one weld left to do down at the crux of that V where those supports are. And I thought that might be sort of like a test case. It can be a little bit hard to get a, a welding tip into a V like that. The flux core fit just fine and I busted out that weld and the MIG side fit just fine too. So it really ended up not being a deal breaker. I will show you now what the MIG side looks like over here on the left this is the finished leg. And then I'll show you the flux core on the other side. Like I said before, some visual differences and some experiential differences, but pretty much similar and solid both ways. All right, thanks for checking out my comparison of my old MIG welder that I've had for a while in this new flux core welder that uh, you can find on Amazon for about a hundred bucks. Um, I don't think it's a simple decision which welder to get if you're going for one of these cheap welders. Uh, it sort of depends on where you're gonna be using it, how much you're gonna use it, how fastidious you are, you know, how much you wanna really clean uh, final weld and like workspace in general. The flux core, it's messy. It's just inherently messy. It spatters everywhere and it's just a little bit messy. Uh, the MIG's a little bit cleaner, but it's a bigger rig. So anyway, there's some trade-offs there. Uh, hit me with a comment if you have uh, ideas, questions, suggestions, etc. Down below, I will hit links to the two welders that you can buy on Amazon. Those are my Amazon Associates links. If you click those, it would help support my channel. I'd appreciate that. I'd also appreciate uh, comments, subscriptions, sharing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, go make something cool, and I will see you in my next build video.